start the show since you're directing the show. I'm the one that's sitting in front of the computer all stuff. All right. Remember who's first in the, um, <laughs> in the title card there, buddy. That's right. All right, everybody. Welcome to Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, the show where we watch the HBO show Watchmen. I'm Scott. And today we are going to be discussing Season 1, Episode 5, A Little Fear of Lightning. Uh, welcome to everybody who's, uh, you know, started watching us. We appreciate you coming in. Thank you for those who have subscribed, for those who have liked. We appreciate that very much through us reviews. Uh, Sam, uh, yeah. th- this is a pretty momentous episode. This episode has a lot of things that I know when we started this project, we said, are they going to do it? Are they going to show it? Are they going to be that bold? We have the answers now. We are the future Scott and Sam, if you will, that we were envious of <laughs> at the time when we came up with this scheme of doing this podcast. It's not like a Rick and Morty episode. Everything, <laughs> everything sounds like a Rick and Morty episode in my head sometimes, Sam. And, and that's because, uh, as you may or may not be aware, I am currently uh, also hosting a podcast called <laughs> Nobody Cares What Scott Thinks. Nobody Cares. Oh, no one cares. And I wanted to watch this Rick and Morty a second time because it affected me a little bit emotionally, so I wanted to get my stuff together. So that is not out yet. Mea culpa. Hey. We'll get that done. We'll get it done. Sam, people. where would you recommend today? What's your favorite recommended way for mm-hmm. our listeners and our viewers to get in touch with us? Make sure, number one, you are going to our website, nerdcyclopedia.com. Okay. You can get all our links there. You can get um, um, our Twitter information, which is at Nerdcyclopedia. And also we're at Instagram as well, also at Nerdcyclopedia. And on Facebook at Nerdcyclopedia. Make sure that you are on our Facebook group. Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen Facebook group. We got a whole group for ourselves, people, all talking all about the Watchmen and everything. It's awesome. Um, make sure that you're downloading our podcast. Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen everywhere that you listen to your favorite podcast. Apple Cop Podcast, Google Play, Stitcher. Um, tune in, um, basically Spotify, everywhere that you listen to podcasts, we are there. Um, make sure that you're giving us some feedback. We may even get it on the air for you guys at watching Watchmen at nerdcyclopedia.com. There we go. Thank you so much, Sam, for rattling off the list of places you have set us up. Appreciate that. I don't have a lot to do with those things because they're work. All right. So, <laughs> so let's get started here. We're going to jump right on in. So, uh, this episode begins with the Watchmen Chiron showing up in a radio, which is playing the hits of 1985, 1985. And 1985 is, you know, it's, it's the time of the 11 2 attacks, which we see here. It's a time that's, it's where the source material was. So mm-hmm. we are now entering the world of the Alan Moore Watchmen comic. And yep, we are in we are ingressed in the in ingressed in a world. I mean, it's a um it's a beautiful And this thing, thing was just was just Easter egg after Easter egg after Easter egg after Easter egg for us 1985ers, uh, which is what I'm calling us now cuz we need a name. <laughs> and 85ers, 85ers, I like it. So us 85ers, you know, we know all about 1985, so we recognize the Top Knot gang. And First thing you read, first thing that's first thing you see is top nine gang. Did you catch the? Did you catch the little Easter egg with the the, the couple kissing? Yes. <laughs> yes. That was so neat. Oh man, that was nice. Kissing, that was a nice touch the, the right there. Adrian mm-hmm. Veidt workout ad, the one that says the yes. Veidt method, the one that yes. says I will give you bodies beyond method. your belief. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh yep, man. Yep, so yep, yep. so this is <laughs> it's a mission trip. The Jehovah's Witness have sent uh, their members into the belly of the beast because they believe annihilation is imminent and it is urgent that we save the souls now because they're here and they won't be tomorrow. And if you don't save them, they just burn in hell. I'm paraphrasing. So if there are any Jehovah's Witness out uh. there that would like to correct me, that's cool. Uh, but I guess that's it's a pro- it's a you know mission, right? Well, yeah, yeah, they're, they're good little yeah. heroes, you know. They're doing the right thing, doing the right so, thing, doing you know. the Lord's work. And let's let's remember. And this is something that, again, you know, I, I honestly think a lot of people forget about this. But my, when I was in first grade, we had a nuclear exchange drill, and that was oh, after wow. '85. So '85 hmm. was like, you know, we came pretty close to annihilation a couple times this decade. Well, I mean, really, we did. Yeah. In our world. Yeah. Happens almost every every decade somehow. Somebody, so Wade's you know, a good every couple days. Wade's a good Jehovah's Witness. He's gonna go ahead and try to convert these top knots. We'll see what kind of luck do you think he's gonna have, Sam? 
<sighs> not too much. Not too much. So the girl, yeah. so one of the girl in the group lures Light away, uh, presumably because she doesn't want to see him murdered. Uh, <laughs> that's the reason. I mean, that's what I. I how, how many setups have you seen with this in the typical as as a typical trope on a TV show? You know, um, bullies and everything. You know, hit up hit on the the, the guy that's doing the good work, and he seems all he's all scrawny. And everything. Right, right, right. You know, it seems like a uh, <laughs> it's something like something that you will see on Stranger Things and everything, which ironically takes uh, takes place in the, in the eighties and everything. So the girl comes in, um, you know, whisking him away, and you know she wants to make sure that you know he's um, um, you know that he's he's a good guy or what have you. Takes you know, him and the, takes him to like the, takes um, him in the fun house. Takes him into the fun yes. house. Woo! Careless whisper starts to play. Careless Whisper. Woo, we get it. We we get that as a thing <laughs> to start out. Careless Whisper is all over the place, I and mean, it's definitely a good song. George Michael is in the house, and, people. And he should be because this is a great song. It defines the uh, the eighties. Uh, I've always said, and this is something uh, a little bit of Scott trivia for anybody that has never cared. Uh, if I was a major league baseball player, my walk up music for every at bat would be Careless Whisper. Every single time. <laughs> So I don't care. I, I I don't care if that didn't get a laugh from Sam. I think it's funny. Yeah, I, I love it. That's why his podcast nobody cares, people. That's right, because nobody does. Uh, so <laughs> Wade expresses a belief that the bomb will kill them all shortly. Uh, the girl is set, sort of seduces Wade pretty easily here. Not a whole lot of resistance. Oh, super easy. Oh man, he's I mean, it's like this is a straight up. If you call it. Called a stone cold virgin. This is what Wade is. <laughs> I, I she, for her. she just lets him. She, she he just lets her strip him down to his bare buttocks. You have to understand that the number one rule in life is uh, if you're not at home and you're naked, there should not be anybody between you and your clothes. That's <laughs> that's the number one rule. That's something you'll learn over time. Oh, his mind tells him, though, no, I should not be doing this. No, I don't want to. No. But, you know, she says, oh, well, I think you do. Yeah, uh... <laughs> oh, man. So so she runs <laughs> off with the clothes, says, I got the Jesus Freaks clothes. Oh, man. And yeah, she just he's called... in a He's in hey. a hall of mirrors, right? Yes, yes, yes. Hall of Mirrors. So Wade's in his Hall of Mirrors. And He's looking in a glass of mirrors, people. Looking at his face, calling himself weak and stupid. And the second he does that, a shot, like everything explodes and he has all this pain in his head. And he sort of comes to and every mirror is shattered and it's my personal, this is my personal hell. Wait, 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 wait. Be before, before we get to that, how, what does this sort of remind you of back in like the Watchmen um, in the um, graphic novel? When um, Rorschach was, you know, beat up by those bullies and everything. Okay, you know? yeah. This is mm -hmm. sort of like a. It's not exactly like that, but it's it's in a, in a um in a way where he's being taken advantage of. It's by, humiliation. Yeah, uh, yeah, a way of humiliating him some, and some um, intimidation. Yeah, but yeah, you would yeah. think that that the you know this all gets sort of washed under by the trauma of what happens next, right? Like that's sort of oh, yeah. subsumed oh, yeah. by what's about to take place. And before we, and, and Wade sort of comes to in this, and it, like I said, it's my personal hell. Like if they're if, if they're getting it ready for me, this is a good template, and I'll tell you why. So I have this big scar on my leg, right? Not every mm -hmm. not everyone knows this. Uh, definitely nobody that watches this knows this, because why would they? And it's because like you know five years ago, I, I was moving this mirror that was in my garage, and it broke, and it cut my leg real bad. You just oh man. Whoosh. I cut it. Ooh. Listen, I'm not going to get gory here, but a lot of stitches. So I do not like being around um, broken glass, mirrors, stuff like that. Just freaks me out. Do not like it. Oh, man. So this mm -hmm. this was a real horror, a real Freddy Krueger moment for me. Uh, yeah. Watching <laughs> watching Wade try to man, get out of this place. Trauma. Trauma already. It's not even five seconds to the episode. Man, yeah. Scott is getting just, whoo. Now, I would, I would venture to you uh, that, I, I mean, I would remember this incident. If I were mm -hmm. Wade before mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. squid, <laughs> that's you, yeah, I mean, right. I, I'm not, I'm not a forgetful man, but mm -hmm. I would imagine that you know, without the squid, this is going to show up on his list of things that happened to, to mm -hmm. tell someone about later. Uh, he's screaming, "What happened?" There's like a, there's like a bunch of dead people here. This is a, uh, this is a trailer moment 
I saw this in the trailer. We're wondering why this was going to come in handy. Yeah, I, and it's the one thing to say about that. I, I know a trailer is supposed to get you excited about a project and everything, but a lot of scenes that they, they showed, I, I wish I had not seen. <laughs> you know, so by the time you actually see the show, it, it, it is what it is. But, you know, um, one thing I do want to ask um, and, and say, so are we supposed to believe that that we see we see a bunch of dead bodies, but everybody is not dead. You know, there are people out there as waves walking around and, you know, there are people out there that's walking around and some people that didn't get affected um, or didn't get killed by the psychic blast. Are, are we to believe that um, the, the blast got so far as to kill majority of them and wasn't able to reach everyone? And because Wade was in the fun house, you know, he was somehow shielded. Well, I, apparently he was, but. I don't know the mechanics or the science to make that work, but I would. That was just one thing I was just wondering, you know, during during that scene, like, you know, how exactly is he alive, and what made him? Is so so is this his? So is the mirrors like the protection? Is that the reason why he now ends up putting on a mask? So I don't number, know. Number These are one, questions. Number one. <laughs> number one. You're asking me about the science here. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and recap what science does tell us about this. Science tells us that an extra-dimensional squid was dropped in New York City, unleashing a bomb of mental energy that murdered people. Mm-hmm. I don't know the science of that, man. I've, <laughs> I have to get, I don't know. Hey. Could be anything. Hey, I, I don't know. You know, I think there is something something about the reflection, something about being inside. There's mm-hmm. it's, it's sensitivity, too, so just like how – you know, uh, like I burn in two seconds if I go outside. You know what I mean? Like that sort of things. They're variable per person. So right. it's like strength and pain tolerance right. and electrical currents okay. tolerance, right. <laughs> which is not. It just sounds like a mad scientist right. thing to know, but is obviously a variable. Uh, just a just a little detail nitpick. Or but whatever. he's got all this shame and all this like. Mm-hmm. He's got all this pain tied up in this moment, and that is before he sees these people that are mostly strangers, yes. mostly right. strangers dead. You know, he's not. This isn't his. This isn't his family, and it's, I'm not. I'm not trying to minimize that uh, or anything, but it's. It's. I mean, it, it's going to be hard well, for him to have read this for at least like the next couple hours. Is he did this by <laughs> going in that fun house and taking all his clothes off with a girl? Well, right? well, hold on. He they, he just got off the bus. Yeah. You know, he's there for a mission. We know his. You know, we know his religion and everything, and he's. He's really super. We already know he's super intense mm-hmm. by just his whole demeanor and everything from the past few episodes. But in this instance, you know, he gets off the bus. He tries to he sees a group that he feels that he can, you know, talk to and save. He rehearses, you know, what he's mm-hmm. about to say mm-hmm. and everything and goes out to like to present it and everything. So that we we learn in a matter of a couple minutes what his whole, you know, what who he is, mm-hmm. you know. So this, what happens here to him in a fun house, um, you know, the girl um, taking off all his clothes and everything, seducing him, and him being succumbed to his inner, you know, his um, his urges and everything, mm-hmm. it's, it's a great contradiction to what he was taught and to what he felt that he thought he, you know, what he was, that he wasn't the type of person to do that. Yeah. And now he's actually, um, his foot is, you know, his foot has been put to the fire, you know, um, and he's able now to look himself literally in the mirror and say, this is, is this, he, he doesn't really know who he is at this moment. You know, it's been, um, he has to now question everything, uh, you know, about his whole thing. And then all of a sudden the big bang happens. And, and let's not forget, he was sort of expecting a big bang, right? He was expecting something, uh, something right. more, more along the lines of a, of, of a flash of heat and the oblivion of nothingness uh but what he got was something much worse much more terrifying uh, being a survivor here and, and someone who had really no business no earthly business being anywhere near new york city someone right. who intruded at you know the direction of people of authority in their life and someone who mm-hmm. was sent because of the urgency of the situation and again a situation created by adrian mm-hmm. veidt so this is more of the so Vite's machinations removing Doctor Manhattan also drew Wade to New York, mm-hmm. and his machinations dropped the squid. So he did both uh, of those yep. things. So this is all Adrian. All Adrian is the primary actor of all of this, uh, leading up even, uh, even 
even extending as far out as Wade, you know, the, the fourth character in Tulsa 30 years, 35 years after the fact. So Adrian invites pie, hands and fingers are in every pie. And, you know, who bought his company? Lady True. So whose fingers do you think are in every pie? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So she, she's the, um, the, the, the female version of um, Adrian. Yeah, she's looking, so she's she... getting a Thanksgiving manicure, if you will. She's, got, <laughs> she's got so many fingers in different pies um so this let's what did you think of this last shot because this is probably a shot we've been waiting for together yeah. for right. a long time and that is the the for the full zoom out scale of the disaster of the dropping of the squid so in New York City. so um i didn't think they was going to show this in a show i had no in, inclination that they were going to go i i thought at some point they were going to flash back to, you know, the 80s, maybe to like, um you know, uh, showing us shots of like the Minutemen or maybe, you know, some some events that happened back then, yeah. you know, with the um maybe the Crime Busters. You know, like I said, or like I said, the Minutemen. But I had no inclination that they were going to actually show the giant squid. The whole so squid they, and nothing but the squid. The whole squid, nothing but the squid. And so we get a squad. I'm wearing a shirt that says <laughs> squad, not squid. But I thought it was appropriate. Uh, maybe I'll get a squat, a squid one that just has pictures of squid. Under- <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> it's a golden girl shirt. Relax, everybody. Uh, so that, the squid looks pretty awesome. I mean, it, it definitely yes, doesn't it look did. faked. Yes, it uh, did. Yes, it did. I, I paused yeah. it a couple times just to take a look at the rendering. You can definitely see all the bodies in the street, although I couldn't quite make out the scenes at, depicted in the comic. Although I right, 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 I did right, check right. just to see, but the frame I paused on, it wasn't there, and I'm not going to. Listen, I'm not okay. talking, saying it's not there, and, and let's go get them or anything. But if it isn't, we I'm, I'm, we should I'm consider. Sure. We should consider going well, and getting them. Yeah, right. I'm uh, well as detailed as they have this show and everything. I'm sure there's a lot of um, Easter eggs that we can you know pause and look at and see that would be pretty comic accurate mm-hmm. as far as that squid. Um, you know, um, with with that squid on that building. But it was awesome. It was awesome, awesome, awesome to see. You know, they put the um, money there. Uh, I definitely spent a little bit on this. The effect is very good. The squid has is just an enormous monster, and you can really see. Uh, you know, this is this is sort of the type of how painting ridiculous is work. This? It's it's how, how ridiculous is this? This is a squid. <laughs> the very explanation of what what happened is nonsensical. It doesn't make, doesn't any, make any sense, sense but at all. It's, 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 but it's awesome, and it's definitely in a context of this universe. Mm-hmm. Even more so than it was in, I guess, in like Watchmen and everything. You know, I, I what what would make um, Adrian's idea of a squid be, you know, the um the thing that you know kills, um you know, um three million people and everything. Why why squid, Adrian? What is the, you know, what is the reason and you know for that? I, so who, who could say? Who could say? We know he brought in the design team and he brought in you know the world's <laughs> artists. Let's <laughs> take a crack at designing the most terrifying thing. Well, yeah. I well, I, I guess if you if you think about like an octopus, mm. you know, or you know, or or squid or what have you, um, if that was in your living room flapping all about, that would be some scary. Sh- Do you ever you ever see one of those videos of an octopus, like they put the octopus in a peanut butter jar, and then <laughs> like they leave they leave, and then the octopus gets out of the peanut butter jar, like figures it out. Oh, uh, that's man. the sort of thing that haunts me. Uh, is that sort of that sort of thing so we kind of cut from this squid to this new york tourism campaign that has like michael imperioli's in it right um come back to new york because apparently people haven't been in new york since the uh you know apparently that's a place where our world intersects with all the squids uh, <laughs> the dangerous squids in fact so uh, right. wade sort of betrays some of his bias here says nobody wants to go we ain't going back to new york Ain't no red-blooded Oklahoma male gonna admit he's scurred, but they're scurred. He's disgusted by this, in fact. Disgusted. A little bit of well, bias. What, how, um, how decent, because it took, because I was so enthralled by the squid on my, my first watch, mm-hmm. I sort of skipped over this scene, <laughs> you know, with the, uh, with, with the comeback to New York. But it makes so much sense, mm-hmm. you know, if, if, and, and, you know, I was reading a couple of things on like, you know, on social media and stuff. Okay. They're really le- leaning real hard into like 9 11 and yeah. everything. Well, you know, Watchmen happened way before 9 11 happened. 
So, um, and it happened in Manhattan, New York, where apparently a lot of things just end up just happening and stuff. Yeah, if you think so, it's weird thinking about these similarities about, like, oh, Watchmen's kind of like 9-11. Imagine what it was like on 9-11, knowing all this stuff because you already read Watchmen and being like, this is kind of like Watchmen. <laughs> Hold up. Somebody made a comment and this is no, 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 you know, not making light of 9-11, but no, someone no. made a comment on social media that um, Bin Laden ripped off watch. Oh, <laughs> well, I do want to talk. I, let's talk for a second about this because, you know, and, 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 and not to get too into not to get too 9 11 uh, on the yeah. show, which we don't want to do. But, but let's right. just consider for a moment because this is a, a, it's a historical signpost that for us is, is the stand in for 11 too, right? It's our historical signpost that most resembles that. So let's talk for a second about that and mm -hmm. what, about what Adrian did and what the mm -hmm. implications of that are. So 9-11, memory serves. Mm -hmm. I think 5,000 deaths, 50,000 affected people. Right. Um, like 50,000 survivors, 5,000 dead. So let's take that number. And I, and I want to I think for a second about the cultural saturation right now. Like, like I know people that are like first – like order of removal away from someone who is involved, like who was a survivor of nine eleven. Right? right. Okay. Uh, like, and that is five thousand people that that were killed and, and fifty thousand people that were affected. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So let's think for a second. And and I was going to think about this later, but we, since nine eleven came up organically, I figure no right. sense of you know no sense putting a nine eleven off. Right. Uh, but essentially, this is a, this is something that is a few orders of magnitude bigger. So 3 million dead, 10, 10 times that affected, 30 million people affected. Right. So I, I think it's important for us to understand the pervasiveness of this experience and how common it would be to know someone that was either a direct survivor like Wade or someone who was impacted and survived like, um, like the, the guy, that guy's mom, right? Mm -hmm. So right. for me, you know, I, that's something that's an interesting comparison I think about. In all seriousness, obviously, I was like 18 years old when 9 11 happened, and that was a you know an awful thing, an awful thing. And uh, you'll certainly yeah, make light of it, that, but it's an interesting it, comparison. It, yeah, it definitely is. I mean, I never remember where I was in 9 11 working um, on the phones, and all of a sudden I'm seeing, you know, these, these, this, the plane, somebody, the, their, the news is just replaying a plane, first plane hitting mm -hmm. everything, and people are just wondering what's going on. All of a sudden, live, you see the second plane. And then he's like, oh, man, what the heck is going on here? And we're here in PA yeah. and we hear like, um, you know, rumors of planes falling out of the sky. So, yeah, imagine that um, in, in a, imagine that type of trauma and type of um, element going on in this universe where a squid happened. And it's a thousand three million, times. It's yeah, a thousand a times, thousand you know? times and times bigger and in the same you, place. In the same place, if you really think about how the trauma is being dealt in this universe, mm -hmm. com com compared to how we're still dealing with the effects of 9/11, with um, you know, the 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 the, the um anniversary and survivors you know, like um, fund. survivors, com yeah, just basically just any type of psychological, we're the geopolitical it fallout, the exactly, reorganization of the world order. Exactly. It changed the way, you know, we go on planes now and like security and all that stuff. Just those changes. Imagine in this universe, they're really getting off light. It was three million people involved with that. Yeah. Plus, on top of that, you had a giant squid. <laughs> a big squid. Squids. So the ramifications of, of that trauma... You know, and the fallout of, um, you know, people dying and like you talking about six degrees of separation being re six degrees removed from, you know, people that are being affected mm -hmm. by that. The the trauma in this universe has to be tremendous. So um, I'm excited to see if this does go on past this season, how the rest of the world or at least other parts of the country are dealing with, um, you know, the effects of something that happened merely 30 years ago. 9-11 mm -hmm. to us happened around 20 years ago, yeah. right? Yep. So less than 20 years ago. Yep. So 30 years ago in this universe is not that far removed. So, um, but yeah, so, so, you know, to, 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 to parallel your point there, a lot of comparisons, a great parallel and everything, but the trauma and effect happen a thousand times greater in this universe. And the way it's affecting, um, um, people now in this universe, AKA looking glass, mm -hmm. AKA Wade. It's just, um, it's just a wonderment. And, and, you know, and that's just something, it's just something to consider when we think about this, you know, support group, um, the way it goes to here, 
Um, and just after a bit. So I just wanted to bring that up since it came up, it came oh, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so we see, we see, well, we, let's look a little bit as far as the commercial. So we got like commercials saying, okay, come back, mm. you know, welcome, uh, welcome back. I will, I, I've, I've, um, I love like the, um, you know, they had the one dude from Sopranos on there. I see. So we he, like um, Calamari was Mike, some yeah, Mike, Michael Imperioli. I think that's what his name is. Michael Imperioli, so. Christopher <laughs> Altisani from the Sopranos. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. How did, he, how did, how did he survive what happened to Adrian? No, no, no. This is not a podcast about that show. Although I believe I could do one. If we, if you just teed up a Sopranos podcast for us right now and said, you know, if you woke up this morning and got a gun. Well, yeah, I could probably do it, but uh, hey, we're not here for that. We're here for Watchmen, and that's but, but, we're more oh, the better oh, for it. How could you have a um joke in there? As, you know, we do our squiz with calamari. Because <laughs> it's calamari. Really, is that the type of commercial you want to? Uh, you know, it's just and and way has to be just like what the. Fuck? It would be like if they had a, a commercial for New York and it kept saying "fly on in," like they kept emphasizing it over and right! over. Right. Like, You'd be like, you I don't know. They, they could have picked, but they could have picked better. That's they, right. they, they, yeah, yeah, the, uh, that was, um, mm, that was interesting the way they just had that um, in there like that. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so, so they had the comeback video, mm -hmm. and the way they, um, the way Wade is just um, letting them know that he, you know, <clears throat> Wade supposedly has these, these, this intuition about how um, people act, how you know he could tell when someone's lying and. You know, he he just has that intuition about him. Mm. So he tells the um the executive or, or the ad you know ad folks that people despite despite the 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 handwritten mm -hmm. they had they're, that they were they're lying. <laughs> and he's right, probably. You know, maybe he does have that sort of you know uh, sensitivity. Maybe that's what saved him. Uh, that's an open question. I'm holding scissors for some reason. That's good. I'm a fidgeter. All right. So so Looking Glass has like a. Uh, a secret like garage where he keeps his looking glass van, kind of like how Inspector Gadget's car could turn into a van whenever he wanted it to. Yeah, uh, he's got his he's got his his uh, looking glass mask he puts on, and uh, you know uh, we have a conversation here where Red Square and Panda are unfamiliar with what churches look like, which is kind of funny. Right, um, it makes me think me you know it makes me think you know they all look the same. How can you tell the difference between Episcopal and whatever? It makes me laugh. And we get this conversation about the pills. Looking Glass tells Angela, hey, chill about the pills. I can't just go yelling all the time about pills. And then, of course, then the main character shows up, and it's my favorite part of the episode. Because Lori Blake walks out of her new office and asks for Mirror Guy to come play her a visit. Mirror Guy! Mirror Guy! <laughs> so, Lori Blake's awesome. I, 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 wrote a, I wrote a blog this week about that. So if you haven't checked it out, go check it out at nerdcyclopedia.com. It's called, it's called I Will Not Apologize for Loving Lori Blake. Still won't. <laughs> Still won't. Uh, all this 1980, as an 85er myself, you know, you guys know that you know, I'm excited to see between Adrian coming more into Adrian, between, you know, uh, Lori being Lori and between the squid. I mean, I'm just, I'm swimming in 85ism right now, so I'm loving oh, it. Oh, man, well, we're, we're in it deep. And Lori kind of gives us a little... Kind of reads back through uh, Looking Glass's personnel file. Calls a mirror, mirror guy a couple times. Can assault him. Uh, says he joined post White Knight. He's he's from Tulsa, but really the Texas Oklahoma border. And let me just clarify something about Oklahoma here. And I have a couple things to say about Oklahoma specifically tonight. Number one, uh, Oklahoma uh, is a big place, and if you drive 50 miles in Oklahoma, you're not really in a different location. It's the same place. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like a rip. I don't mean it like a rip. So there's this, you know, my mom lives in Oklahoma City. This is fried fried chicken place. It's like I don't know, 80 miles west that we, that we went to, and it was the drive was treated like normal. And I was like, this is an hour and a, an hour and a half, <laughs> and we weren't on a highway, Sam. We were just on a road. It just went one direction for like an hour Not and a half. That right? Okay. And it had like you know another road intersected with it every single mile, so the whole thing was busted up. Weird, right? Crazy. Okay. Anyway, so that's a, so there's a lot of space there, and everyone just says they're from the place like Oklahoma City or Tulsa or Norman or whatever. Okay. Anyway, just a little bit of local color, and that's why you picked our show to pretend that you watched. All right. You can just put this on your screen, walk away. Uh, people will think you're a serious person. It's the truth. All right, so we find out uh, Mirror, Gla Mirror Guy. I'm just going to start. Mirror Guy. Mirror guy. <laughs> Looking Glass joined post-White Knight. 
Uh, he wears this reflectatine is his mask, and it is absolute psychic protection, uh, which is the new explanation for why he's doing all this stuff. Super interesting. World building, right? So now we know why he's doing it. It makes a lot of sense. Right, right. right. Uh, Lori asks him if he's scared shitless, and he says, I sleep fine. Which we don't. Yeah, and then then she pay, she pegs him super quick. Okay, well you sleep fine because you're wearing that um reflective team. Yeah, yeah, you're wear you're a coward anyway. Whatever. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You need that mask to, to to stay on. And believe me, he gives every excuse to keep that mask on. He loves that you know, mask. she says she she says take it off, take it off. You know, it's like we gotta wear it because you know such such told us to um. The regulations you know. require. <laughs> So one thing I want to think about this for a second. So so how good of a detective is Looking Glass in your estimation? That's my first question here because Looking Glass isn't. He's only been doing this three years, right? Yeah. He hasn't been doing this a long time. You know, police experience is important. It's how you build up that reservoir of experience. Yeah, so you know yeah, when someone yeah. is lying to you because you've been lied to. You got to get lied to. And I'm not a cop, but I would imagine a billion times before you can just tell that's a lie. That's not a lie, right? Right. Uh, right. So he doesn't have that reservoir, although it's a speciality of his. Right, right. And he joined the police force right after the White Knight. So how long ago was that? Just three years Just three ago? Just three yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he hasn't been a, um, you know, officer for that long. No. Really. And, and you know, we'll, we'll see throughout the episode here, but he's a, he's legit. Like, he's not, he's not a plan. He's just, just legit who he says yeah. he is. He's up front. Yeah. Uh, but Lori drops out with that. What the, that her cat and mouse with these people is, she's oh. so, she's just running circles around him the whole time. It's not fair. It's, it's chess and it's, checkers. It's, it's, it's it's funny because we we uh, did you see I'll read the PDP files today? Yes. Okay. So Lori um Lori is uh, we 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 were going to we're going to have to some point learn a little bit more her motivations and everything because she's sort of stuck because Dan Dryberg is in prison mm-hmm. and she had to make a deal with um with you know the law enforcement for her to I guess end up being like an agent and everything. Yes. So are we? Does she really want to do the job that she does, or does she have to do the job that she does? Oh, I, I think have to for sure. But I think that her. Well, I know we had we have to, but in Lori's mind, is she trying to just buy her time until she can find a way out of? It? I, so what is the end game of her situation with the FBI? I think she has taken her taken her derision or her dislike for mass adventuring and simply just directed that out at mm. the quarry of the anti vigilante task force. Okay. So I think that that where she would used to not want to go and do it. She hated all the patrolling and that just stinks. That she just takes that and says, here, all that sarcasm I thought about myself, I'm just going to put it right at you. Right. And that's how she acts. Um, I think that what we're led to believe about her is that she does have some nostalgia, though. Um, you know, reading through the PDP files, which included a uh, her transcript of her interview uh, from mm-hmm. the FBI last week, and then the mm-hmm. schematics for a certain special item that she acquired. From <laughs> so check that out. Uh, but, uh, you know, one thing that's plain is that she didn't, she didn't just quit doing the mass adventure stuff in 85. In fact, she changed her persona, adopted more of the things her dad did right. and kept, kept doing vigilantism, including, including killing the Oklahoma city bomber, which by the way, fuck that guy forever. <laughs> Mr. McVeigh. That's right. Fuck him. So, so this is it. So she's she's just playing with him like like a cat with a June bug, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we get another one of these Breaking Bad esque montages here where Wade goes home. We see Wade's home. Uh, obviously, he's missing his wife. I mean, he misses his ex wife. I think they're making that pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the guy is lonely. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, I don't he, have he, any friends. And he, he's lonely, and he has his mask on mm-hmm. all the time. <laughs> all the time, except when he's walking to, from his car to the house, and then he wears that hat. So, so this. Who, do, who, who does that remind us of? Who does it remind us of? <laughs> hey, well, he'll be eating beans in a second. That's right, the Rorschach special. The Rorschach special is beans in a mask. So, <laughs> beans in a mask. Yeah, beans in a mask. It's a Rorschach Coming special. Coming right up. And we see Hooded Justice giving Captain Metropolis the Hooded Justice special at the same time. <laughs> Now, the PDPD of Files this week clarified some of this stuff here. So, 
there in S eighty five ers know that when uh, comedian did assault uh, Silk Spectre, you know they were in a room that had Moloch's super weapon in it, which was just like a like a mirror. And there was a lot of shots reflecting, you know, the intercourse off of the mirror. And they did that both for the Hood of Justice scene. And uh, Dale P says they did that for the scene where the assault took place, too, which oh, had been okay. in a previous episode. So it was designed to hark you back. But you wouldn't know that if they didn't read the PDP file. So do you, you guys got some homework to do. Do you read? So. I can't have you a class if I'm the only one that did a read. <laughs> I heard that too many times. <laughs> So that's pretty graphic for TV. I mean, I'm just oh, yeah, going to say that. Was, that. And, and look at the reaction yeah. that Wade had when, when he, he he stops eating his beans, his can of beans and everything, and his mouth just drops. Like, you know, the same thing I um I had when I first seen this. I was like, okay. And they did it so casually, man. Yeah. It I makes mean, you it wonder what, what – it's like a difference in the art of that time. And it's – uh. It's definitely more you, than you could do on non because this is like on like ABC or whatever. Like it's not on. Like, is it on network TV in that universe? Yeah, huh. pretty much. Funny. I mean, it's not. I mean, I don't know what they have as far as network or cable or whatever, but it's not on like HBO. You know what I mean? It's a level below mm. censorship wise, of course, of course. Right, there right, is no right. Level below. Well, we, HBO, we saw so. the, all the disclaimers and everything yeah. on those previous episodes. And, and that stuff. Topher was watching first of all. That Topher was watching. <laughs> so like this is just how <laughs> TV is. TV is just like this in the future. I'm sorry, the present, but 1985ers feature from there we go. the Biff Tannen timeline, as we'll call it. Right. So, so uh, this this is a neat another neat little Breaking Bad montage since we are living in peak TV. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then there's an alarm that goes off. So uh, Wade sprints for his bunker, and then he tries to turn off his alarm. There's an alarm malfunction, and I gotta tell you, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, this tech support guy is like my favorite character. He maybe is just me. <laughs> like there's an alternate reality where I just work for this company and I'm that guy. Wait, how many? Excuse me. How many times? Did you... How many drills did you run? Yeah. Well, according the, to the manual, the manual says you ought to do one every six weeks. Wait, it's like I don't give up. How long? I want it the next day. Oh next day man. Next day shipping costs twice as much. Oh man! Oops. Yeah. <laughs> and I Put mean, in a new role Wade, of a team. But we learned so much about Wade. We we're beginning to learn so much about Wade. Period. Yeah. In this instance, mm -hmm. we see a different whole character of him. You know, he's not our laid back Wade like how we used to. You know, used to him seeing mm -hmm. Wade is now frantic. We're now seeing more of a paranoia side. We're seeing more of an anxious side. We're seeing him being more. You know, um. A, exerting his anxiety and everything and getting frustrated and getting mad way before this was so cool, calm and collective mm -hmm. and everything. Now we're seeing the character of Wayne. Yes. You know, and it's, um, it's very interesting to see, you know, how this, you know, is developing along. He's, you know, he's someone that has, has things he's doing to cope. Um, mm -hmm. th this next scene with the, with the kids, um, like the kids doing their, uh, their season of the cereal. It's explained yeah. later. So they're pulling sugar out of everything because Robert Redford, doesn't want anyone to have any fun and this is a <laughs> like he's just no fun he, he's such a liberal man oh, my God. oh man so funny such a funny straw it's very funny i wrote i wrote also about how this they use strawman arguments on both sides and it's funny because it's not our reality it's just fun mm -hmm. uh but the smileyos taste like nothing which is funny uh, he says he doesn't taste like anything <laughs> we're, we're then treated to this this forever pet seat poor, right poor kid man <laughs> My daughter will be traumatized just for that. It doesn't taste like anything, it's just Daddy. Nothing. <laughs> That's what's how we solved the, we solved the obesity epidemic. Oh, and, and, the then, terrible. and then he asked a question. Well, how do you like the crunch? Does anyone? Can anyone tell <laughs> me how you like the crunch? <laughs> Give me something here, kids. It's basically alphabets. If we didn't try, oh. as everybody oh. knows, first of all. Everybody knows the worst cereals alphabets of those types of cereals, especially because you don't get any marshmallows there. It's like it's like they came up with a cereal. It's like, this, man. what if oh what if we just made you a cereal that was all the worst parts of Lucky Charms? <laughs> and that's it. We stopped. And then we all just went home and like smoked cigars. That's what alphabets would be. All right. I'm getting off topic. here. So we go to Forever Pet, which is where your pet can be cloned. We see these. This, this is a divorced couple sitting there with a Great Dane that they must have split. As part of, they must have cloned him as part of their arrangement. There's these twins that are sitting there that are running the facility that are there. Um, uh, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you want to wonder, 
I wonder a couple things about this, and this is something that had significance to me because it made me think about the senator. Okay. And it made me think about uh, Lady True, and it made me think about Angela, and it made me think more about clowns. <laughs> All right. So let's say you needed Senator Keen to have an alibi. Okay. A rock solid alibi. So you cloned him and he was on TV. He could do anything. Yep, In fact, I just go ahead and pop this up a little bit. So one thing you definitely could do is if you cloned him, <laughs> if you cloned him, Sam, and then you replaced the real Senator Keen with a clone, perhaps during a kidnapping, mm -hmm. and you liquidated the other Senator Keen, yep. no one would know that you replaced Senator Keen with a clone. Not at all, you know, and we know certain people in certain places are, you know, disposing of clones and stuff left and right and everything. Yeah. So it's definitely a possibility. Yeah. So I got a, I got a bone to pick with HBO about this next scene here. Because, <laughs> all right. So they clone these dogs and can you, can you tell the difference? And Looking Glass basically sentenced this dog to die and they throw the dog in the incinerator. Uh, I just want to give yeah, a, a man, nice fuck on. you to now, HBO can't, can't... for giving me that after a week of baby anxiety. Like, I've just had it. I've had it up to here with baby and dog anxiety. No more. I just want to not... Oh, I don't man. want baby and dog anxiety this week. Just give me a break. Like, put something... Yeah, yeah, put, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know... They're, de they're definitely playing with your emotions with the grossness and, like, the... You know, the lack of um, empathy and sympathy. There's no way they could at least cut a scene in there where, okay, well, you will get this dog to some poor child or what have you. But no, put him in the in the incinerator and and that casually. Ah, nope. uh, well. Yeah, yeah. Press the button. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's slightly you too those, small. Got these pills. You know, did you find out anything? <laughs> oh man. Okay. Man. So. Traumatized. So uh, Cynthia is uh, Wade's ex, and she says you're wearing the hat, so she knows the reflected teens in the hat. Uh, she says you're anxious. Tells him the pills are nostalgia. And did you read this PDP file? Okay. Oh, did you read this one? Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I glanced at the nostalgia part, but I didn't so read through the whole. So it's a whole listing of all the like the side effects and terrible things that happen to you if you take nostalgia. And oh, it's really? Like, oh man, it's all this stuff. So oh. nostalgia was a drug that would allow you to relive memories you liked. It was. I mean, it seemed like something they used for people with dementia, so you could be reminded of things. They pull your memories out and they make a drug that's for you specifically. So it said, no, don't take someone else's, don't overdose. It said all the stuff that happens to you if you overdose. It said the red pills are the most intense ones. It said, yeah. do not use this if you are, it was like driving, using heavy machinery, not not being supervised, in the, have are responsible what? for the care yeah. of a human being or a pet, or having sexual intercourse. It was like this huge list of things. So check that out because it's it's got to have clues for us for next week. But <laughs> okay. also apparently it makes you lose your mind. So a side effect there makes you just, oh yeah, one of the side effects was complete com complete collapse of the immune system. So, whoa, okay. And Looking so, Glass uh, leaves this scene saying that's seven years of bad luck, which of course harkens back to his mirror incident. So one thing I didn't like about this scene was how they had to tell us and hold our hand about the um him the flashing back to um what happened in the um, fun house and everything. I didn't really think that it was necessary to, yeah. you know, flash back. Although, you know, I can see why, but we already got the point because the, the whole fun house thing was just such a, a big memory. You know, it was just a big scene and everything. So to flash back to that so early, so soon in the episode, even at all was just unnecessary to, in my eyes and everything. It says something about Wade here that, that she knows about that. Uh huh. Because like nobody would have asked him, why he was naked. Mm -hmm. They just would have assumed he went crazy. Mm -hmm. Also, he already had his clothes back. <laughs> I mean, he could have just put them on. Nobody right. knows about this, Wade. Wade. Right. It's called a secret. Right. right. Listen, <laughs> all your, all your um, you know, missionaries and everything probably died, you know. In the, there's in the, a number in the, uh, of people that can keep a secret, and it's one. So <laughs> he oh, could have kept man. it. Oh, so he told yeah, her that he because he wanted to. 
Uh, he, he gets his seven years bad luck. That's his, uh, his little Osama sad sack. Seven years bad luck. Which so apparently, so apparently he's um he he has bad luck with women. Yes. And so he but he said he chose her. Mm-hmm. You know, but he was the one that was the cause of their, I guess, relationship ending because he just could not get over the fact of um of her possibly leaving him at some point, which eventually she did. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, hence her saying that, you know, she, she, um, um, talking about him having his pants and, you know, all, having all, all his clothes taken off and, and taken away and everything. I so he's still, clothes, Wade. he's yeah, right, right, right. So it's just so deep that he's still living with that trauma. Like you said at the beginning, not the, so much the psyche squid, but that particular trauma was first and foremost over the squid. That's, and that's weird. And that's a little weird and a little selfish. You know, it's, it's, all these it's, people it's, died, and well, the thing he I, thinks I about I is that he's just like, is that he he let himself down from a moralistic aspect. Like, that seems you, you weird. You think that's selfish? I mean, that was a try. That was a traumatic moment for him. He believed in something so much, as far as you know, him and his missionaries and Jehovah's Witness and everything, um, that he was compromised in. Um, that was his first instance of of someone putting into his fight and challenging his beliefs, so, and he failed at that point. Well, let me, he really failed. Let me counter, so counter positive. Is, counter positive. Okay. Counter positive. Okay. Who stole his clothes? Where that person mm-hmm. is dead, mm-hmm. struck down mm-hmm. in the moment of his offense of offense mm-hmm. to him. By a random, seemingly divine action. Mm-hmm. Okay. So why wouldn't he assume the other thing? Like why assume that it's it's negative? Why is, why take from this all this this negativity? Shouldn't he be feeling some sort of like oh I got out of it or so, something like that? Shouldn't there be some sort well, of well 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 you you would think but we're talking about Wade here and granted we don't know how his childhood was right. so maybe at some point we'll get like some background as far as that but we know enough about him from the time he stepped off that bus mm-hmm. until the time he got um you know uh, took his his clothes taken away from him that this guy is a um is is um what I want to say here he's real intense. He's super intense, and this was a um, this was a um, this was a really big moment for him. I mean, he was off the bus for like two minutes and naked. Like mm-hmm. uh, that's not. I mean, that's a level of naivete that's pretty pretty exciting. Uh, so it'd be like, you know, like if like so, like if something happened, like if something momentous happened to you personally on nine eleven, mm-hmm. and all you ever thought about was nine eleven and that thing, right? Right. Like everyone said 9-11, but in your head, all you were thinking about was that thing that happened. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's weird yeah. to me. It, it, it does it, make but, things but, different. But you're, but, but you're right. It, it does bring a sort of selfishness because all the lives that were lost, you would probably, you know, in the in your right frame of mind, think about that. And he was spared. But he was spared in, he, he, in his faithfulness. He, it's so it, weird. It, it, well, granted, Wade should be thinking about it in a different way, but he's not. Mm-hmm. He's thinking about it in the most traumatic way to where he was compromised. And he says in the mirror that, you know, he was stupid for being so, so, so dumb and so, you know, so um, careless in his um, in his faith and everything that he let somebody um, pull him outside of that. You know, so you, you're believing something so much and um, you're holding uh, that, you know, that that level of belief. In then somebody comes and challenges that belief and you're not prepared for it. You don't have the weapons to battle it. You all of a sudden just let something happen, and it's it's through your own, I guess, your own own, own embodiment and everything that this self control is just all of a sudden just out of nowhere, just taken away from you by someone else. That would essentially, in in, in my eyes, traumatize you. Mm. You know, um, in in a way where it'll is it, apparently it's just it's still affecting him, it affected his his relationships. It affected his um, um, his marriage and everything, and we'll see. You know, um, when we talk about more about the episode, how it's affecting him and in, in, um, uh, how it's further affecting him. So, so the title of the episode is "A Little Fear of Lightning," which right. is I'm, I'm assuming it's as a reference to the wrath of God, right? The, the strike me down if oh if, if that's and if that's not true, Lord, strike me down where I stand. That sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting to think about in the context of where we are, where. He feels like he's sinned, he's transgressed, and all of a sudden this terrible happening has happened. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, certainly it would appear that he has some sort of, like you said, personal guilt tied up in this. 
Uh, to that end, we go to the support group for extra dimensional anxiety and you where yeah. we got our pamphlet this pamphlet also is a pdpedia file you want to read it in its entirety go ahead mm-hmm. uh, also we'll find that the pamphlet is produced by uh vites transdimensional studies uh pretty interesting they're producing this pamphlet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so this this we get this idea of genetic trauma which is an idea that's new where if you inflict uh, trauma on someone they can pass that along to their uh to their offspring through their dna right uh and this this is someone who's inherited their uh inherited their trauma from their mother who was in brooklyn which if you're not familiar with new york geography is the opposite direction from hoboken like hoboken and brooklyn are opposite sides of 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 manhattan uh where the where the herald square is um so wade well, everyone's talking about being afraid of the squid being afraid of the squid um we have trixie from dead uh from deadwood walk in always exciting to see her and uh wade asks her are you a friend of nemo and he says welcome aboard which is uh uh <clears throat> a reference to Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea by jules Verne. <laughs> captain right. nemo fights a big old squid ah he does they fighting a squid but Wade sort of makes Adrian's argument for him here, right? Like, uh-huh. he says, well, we're going to be churned to ash. The U.S., the Soviets, we're all going to be vaporized. Uh, but but something happened. That squid came, and all of a sudden, everything was different. He's making the consequentialist argument. He's making the, the, the Wade argument. Um, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't yeah, know yeah. that he is, but this is exactly what Adrian said. This is exactly what Adrian wants, you know. Yeah. Um, what, what, what was thought at the time... Mm-hmm. You know that um, that um, this alien squid happened, and all of a sudden, you know, Squids the world happen. would be at peace and squish. Squids happen. <laughs> and then everybody will come in peace and stuff. And like Wade is doing right here, he's making his argument. So yeah, absolutely. So so interesting. And then we have his answer: Does it end? Yes, in a light. Does anything ever end, though, Sam? Nothing ever ends. Nothing ever ends. We know that. Better. Mm-hmm. Um, so Trixie from Deadwood sort of says. They stretch this tunnel metaphor a little. Bats do shit in tunnel. I'm like, okay, listen, we know where this is going. Get out, get out of this place. Go to the, the second place where the hippie are not supposed to go. <laughs> uh, and they have this, uh, they have this, you know, beer summit over a pitcher of beer. Now, I also want to say this as someone who's spent some time in Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma beer is not the same as beer in other states. Oklahoma beer is less alcoholic than beer in other states. Uh, ah. At the time. Uh, when I was in my younger days and I went out there, I felt like a veritable, incredible Hulk or Andre the Giant out there. So just so you know, <laughs> it takes a lot of beer to get where you want to go there. Uh, anyway, I don't know. Maybe it's different if you'd stay there. Uh, so there's this whole story where we hear uh, Trixie Squid's story. You know, she's a, a radiologist, uh, not, a, not a waitress. She saw this movie, and it was the <laughs> Stephen Squiddleberg uh, <laughs> movie Pale Horse, which is his... Uh, which is apparently his Schindler's List. So we talked a little bit on that yeah, in the instant. A, um, instead of instead of in the real world being a Schindler's List, it was this, you know, um, in in this world. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he didn't make Schindler's List. Made this instead. Uh, and then you know Trixie leaves. She doesn't get a name. The radiologist leaves, and he says, "I don't have any friends." They make out a little bit, and her friend comes to pick her up, and they drop some lettuce. Ooh, where do we see that from? And yeah, we saw that in the premiere. And that was yeah. on the final, and it's still on the final. <laughs> so Looking Goss calls it in, tails him out to a an abandoned an abandoned department store. Which <laughs> So here's the stuff I think about, right? Why is this why is it abandoned? Like what force so like in our in our history, right? The internet is forcing these things to happen. Like Amazon.com and Walmart, like they're closing the brick and mortar stores. There's a reason there's no Walden Books, there's a reason there's no Barnes and Noble really. Uh, these brick and mortar stores are failing, but what is causing that to happen in the Watchmen universe where the internet's <laughs> not really a thing? Well, I can't shop for a turkey baster sitting on my couch in the Watchmen universe, right? I can't do it from the, right. the checkout line of a different store in right. the Watchmen right. universe, right. you know? Right. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious as to why that is. Um, Great point. So he follows them to a mall and the truck bed has true boxes. 
boxes of product from Lady True. We know she's into cloning and advanced pharmaceuticals. Looking, gu Looking Glass finds a gun. Heads on inside to see what's going on. And they're teleporting basketballs all over the place. Kind of seems like they're testing the teleporter out. So, so quick question. Yeah. So, in this scene, we do see like some images and everything. Mm. Um, what was that first image that we seen when he walked in there? Um, like it looked like a, it looked like a, yeah, a big yeah. eyeball, right? So, was that like a the squid eyeball, or what are we supposed to take uh, from that? I think it is the squid eyeball. Uh huh. I think it's the background of that video. Okay. Uh -huh. We're about to uh -huh. see. So, spoiler alert: there's a video. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> so. Wade is greeted by the 7th Cavalry who said, hold on, we don't want to kill you or nothing. Uh, Senator Keene doesn't really do a really great job hiding his voice. I sort of realized it was him too. And I didn't know him as well as Looking Glass did. Didn't see him on TV all the time. Uh, Senator Keene says, the 7th Cavalry is run by me. <laughs> the police were run by Judd. <laughs> we're doing tell you know what that is? Wade is terrified by the teleportation field because he thinks that's what caused the squid. And he says, the truth will set you free. And much like Plato and Plato's Republic, he pulls Wade from the cave of his ignorance and shows him the light of truth and what really happened on 11-2. So, so, so apparently the 7th Cavalry has been um, really looking at Wade for a while. Yes. So they've been waiting, as, they've been waiting and waiting to see a way they could pull him in because... Um, they see a lot of potential in him. They the see a way to, he, yeah, he fits the pro profile of a, a good, you know, a recruit and everything. And, um, you know, knowing what they know, um, and once, um, um, you know, they show him the truth and everything, we'll see how he reacts to it. So the Vite video. <laughs> All right. Adrian Our Vite. friendly neighborhood, Ozzy. Yes, your favorite, your neighborhood Ozymandias. I have committed a crime of unspeakable cleverness and dastardliness, <laughs> Mr. President. For no reason, in seven years in the past, I made this video when I know you and could just I'll probably be over later. <laughs> That's Adrian, boy. I mean, he's so full of himself, man. I've saved uh. the world tomorrow. That's right. A tense that doesn't exist for good reason. <laughs> I will have saved the world. <laughs> so, Adrian says... He says, this is the day before I do the thing. That thing in the background sure does look like a squid eye and looks a lot like the thing on the wall. Mm -hmm. He says, Robert Redford, you're the president. It's January 21st, 1993, where Bill Clinton was uh, inaugurated on that day in our universe. He says, we're going to work together. We're going to be, you know, uh, we're going to be partners. Uh, the world has had time to heal. I did this monstrosity. It did not come from an extra dimension, but from me. He says it like that. He definitely seems like a Republic serial villain right here. Because, oh, yeah, number one, yeah. he is doing this before... He is cackling before the, the egg is laid, so to speak, to use Lincoln as well. Uh, or the squid hatches, Or right? the squid hatches into a billion monster squids who will eat each other, and then the surviving oh, squid man. is what will, what will come after now, him. Now, Redford knows about this. Yeah. Seven years, you know, after the fact and the everything. The Appropriations Committee knows about it, too. So... It really goes, it really obeys to, to ask the question of government conspiracies yeah. um, and secrets mm -hmm. that, you know, are told to them. And, you know, things that not only happen in this world, but maybe, maybe in the real world about things that are hidden, you know, from from people. For is it the greater good of the people to know this? Is it the greater, is it, does it benefit the public to actually know everything that's going on, no matter what the public says that they want. So, you know, the public only wants so much. Mm -hmm. You know, conspiracy is there's always going to be conspiracy theories about things that happen out there, mm -hmm. you know. But the public can only take so much. They can't know everything. So that's, um, I guess, why we have um, the governments, like in this situation that was told about a certain uh, incident that happened, and... For what purpose? I mean, it's a long video, and he lays it all out. Yeah. And it's yeah. because, you know, he thinks this is how long it'll take to get Nixon out of the White House, I guess. Um, one of those prognostication things. This is the type of flourish that is totally unnecessary. Adrian does not have to do this at all. Not at all. He's won. Not at all. He didn't need not to at all. this. He could have recorded you know, you know, this on the know, 3rd of November and just he, done it. He, he, could, he didn't have to record any of it at all. He, no, he won. You know, he did what he needed to do 
but Adrian being Adrian. So he left that loose and dangling. That's the thing. I, you know, I was under the impression that his new renewed interventionism was something caused by Dr. Manhattan telling him nothing ends. So saying nothing ever ends, Adrian, nothing ever ends. And, and it's a great, it's a great split in parallel because you got Rorschach's journal over here on one end. And then you got Adrian doing what he does on the other end. Both have, are exact opposites as far as their ideology and everything, but both are revealing the the um the um the the secret the um the conspiracy in two different facets. This would be you know, like two different sets of people. This would be like if there was a um like if there was a video, and it was Osama <laughs> bin Laden saying President Obama. It's January 21st, 2009, right? Now, f to be clear, I'm only making that illustration so that I can show how crazy that would be, right? right I'm certainly right. not insinuating such a video exists, and I'm definitely not saying that asshole would be able to pull off something like this because he was much more primitive and stupid uh, and much more dead also. <laughs> also got to throw that out there. Uh, thank you, Obama, for that. We'll give him credit <laughs> for that in the real world. So... How long is this video where he just lays it all out for a couple hours for Bobby R, the dude that did shampoo? <laughs> anyway, Bobby R. <laughs> all right, so we cut over to this. Uh, we cut over to this melting pot. It's just full of mm -hmm. like tar, right? right it's full yeah. of tar and. Uh, Crookshanks. Yeah, Crookshanks. Crookshanks, come here. Put me in this enormous death machine. Hook me up. I don't want to die out there. Perhaps I'll send you first, Mrs. Crookshanks. And then he jumps in. Uh, so Ozymandias flings himself from his prison onto a moon of Jupiter. That is definitely Jupiter in the background. How weird is this shit, man? I'm like, what? are you serious? This is just weird. So the list of people that could be responsible for this has dwindled to two. Two. There are two explanations. There's not more than that. It's Lady True. It's Dr. Manhattan. It's one. It's the other. That's it. It's one or the other. Yeah, and yeah, we find out he's not on Mars, definitely. Definitely not on Mars. Further away than Mars. And oh, yeah. By the, by, the, by the way, by an order of magnitude further away. You get beyond Mars and stuff just starts getting very distant, uh, very <laughs> fast. Um, you don't believe this is real. You can just get a telescope and look up at uh, Jupiter. It's up there. Uh, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> so we have this weird situation where uh, Ozymandias treats his dead clone staffs because there's so many hundreds of bodies up here hundreds hundreds, hundreds yeah. just treats them like freeze-dried ink it has this old school steampunky spacesuit that's just so inventive and so crazy that he was able to like pull that off yeah and, with buffalo um fur and stuff with inverted or, or buffalo skins fur. and <laughs> and his like it looked like a like a statue almost that he hollowed out yeah and, uh -huh, i mean yeah. this is this is wild stuff um, he makes a, uh, he makes a, it says, save me D something. Yeah. So save me. We don't know what it stands for. Uh, that's, so, that's so, that's so Lindelofian, you know, yeah. so you, you, you reveal something, but leave a whole bunch of, you, you, you reveal one thing and you have, you open up four more questions. What the hell's going on here? So probably, so what starts with D? So Dr. Manhattan starts with D. Yep. So save me, Dr. Manhattan has captured me. Save me, Dr. Manhattan. Uh, save me, Dr. Manhattan stuck me here. Mm -hmm. You know. So he's, either, <laughs> so he's either trying to signal Lady True or Dr. Manhattan with this. So who knows which it is? Who knows if that's not the same person? I mean, I'm not going to. I'm not going to put on my hat. I'm, 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 I'm still trying to figure out why. Why save me? Mm -hmm. You know. Um, hmm. You know, does he have no communication to to his uh, so so? And then we 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 get the we get him pulled back in, and then the game warden is just fed up. Mm -hmm. You know, I told you once. You know, what I'm saying I told you in the letter and everything. You know, and I think that definitely is Mr. Phillips, like for sure. By the way, yeah, that's mm -hmm. definitely a Mr. Phillips. Uh, and he kind of he kicks him. He says, he says, "Your God, as, as our God, is gone. And you're pathetic, every one of you." And I think our God is it's either Dr. Manhattan or Lady True. Um, yeah. It could be either yeah. or. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then we have this montage after this, which, you know, I, I can't wait to see what's going on with Ozymandias, but uh, <laughs> this montage where Wade uh, sort of 
turns on Angela because of what the truth is. Is anything true? Is what he says. I want to. Yeah, help. I mean, at, at at this point, Wade is just, his whole world is turned. You know, the very thing that he was afraid of mm. for the past. How long has it been now? 30, 35, 30 years. 34, yeah, 30, yeah. 35. Yeah. Yeah. The, for the, for the past 30 odd some years and everything is all been revealed to him as a lie. How do you deal with that? How, I, when, when something is so embedded for you for that, as far as that trauma and everything is to find your life, you done made, um, 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 you to shape your life around it with a bunker, you know, your relationships and everything. When you find out that is actual lie and, you know, someone is hoodwinked, you you know, so so how does that affect you? Mm-hmm. You know, everything is presented in a, um, a different color light now. Mm-hmm. You know, you're seeing you're doubting everything. You're you know, everything you, you're questioning everything. And, you know, his thing is like, is anything the truth? That's what what his biggest you know uh, questions are. Is anything the truth? Well, earlier we saw it. I mean, you know, we saw this dichotomy earlier. And I, I definitely wrote about it on our site, I, I think, when I said that conspiracy theorists are right here. This is the yeah. world where conspiracy theorists are correct. John F. Kennedy was assassinated by someone on the grassy knoll. Don't ask the comedian where he was. Right. Uh, we have this 11-2 is, is, is BS. Elvis is alive. Right. This conspiracy right. theorists are correct in this universe, and it, yeah. it changes things around. I mean, yes, it's a scary thing where if, if you got the it, it, it makes it makes you um, it makes you see that. OK, so the conspiracy theorists, which are deemed, you know, um, people deemed as like the bad guys or, you know, the quote unquote villains or what have you um, are right about everything. So what does that make the so-called good people? <laughs> well, it makes them liars at best. Right? It makes them liars. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're talking You're about openly. <laughs> we're talking about undermining the faith of people in the United States mm-hmm. government. We're talking right. about the, the an erosion of norms of that magnitude. The president has known for twenty years that this is fake. You know, it is obvious from the PDPDA articles that the Redford administration undid years of of Luddite tree and undid years of of reverse technological practices to remove Manhattanite technology. These acts mm-hmm. were passed in the mid nineties. Uh, mm-hmm. In the first PDPDA articles, the you know Dale P is included a memorandum indicating that computers are now required for usage for FBI agents. Right. Uh, you can definitely see how this is all part of Adrian's plan. And how immediately, once finding out, oh, wait, computers didn't cause the squid because it will have come from me, according to Mr. Mr. Veidt. Uh, anything's possible, you're right. I mean, the, 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 the level of, you think about like the so-called Illuminati, if it exists, or, you know, um, are there people out there that are just pulling strings um, to keep everybody in some sort of control well, what is a fact you know right i mean right. It, it, well, right that that's a fact what is i mean we can discuss any particular fact if you want but i'm talking about the general mm. uh you know um metaphysical idea of a fact right and what does it do to people when you lie to them all the time i mean if you can't trust the government if you can't trust the narrative if you can't trust history i mean what what's to stop you from doing anything i mean what right right what exactly crime, what crime could be worse than this? What doesn't pale in comparison to Adrian's, you know, massive lie? His not, and it's not just lying. The slaughter. This is right. a conquest right. of right. the psyches of these people, in addition to the murder of three million people. Uh, All because you, you, Adrian, wanted to play guy and didn't let things play out. You know, so um, he he anticipated something that didn't happen yet. Mm-hmm. You know. He no matter how no matter if you think that the bomb you know if you think that um something is going to hit or a bomb is going to drop or you know what have you mm-hmm. you in Adrian's mind he felt that he needed to intercede something that um you know if you if you believe in God and everything that 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 should have should he should have let it played out mm-hmm. and you know seen exactly what happened whether it was going to be massive destruction or you know. Um, if you if you go by history, you know, maybe it was a war that was going to happen. But, you know, they but on the other end of that, they could have came to terms. Yeah. You know, it could have came to a point where they were going to be, you know, there was going to be a peaceful, you know, decoration anyway. But Adrian wanted to play God and interceded in a way where he actually committed a crime that was so horrendous and atrocity that was just so, 
you know, magnifying that um, <laughs> that people had to keep it secret. I mean, and this is nothing new for governments to lie. Yes. I mean, in the twentieth right. in the twentieth century, obviously, it's just like one long example of why it's a bad idea to have governments that lie. Information suppression is something that's a, a common tactic of both right and left-wing governments that did things like this in the 20th century. Looking at you, right. Joey Stalin, specifically for doing a lot of that sort of editing. Um, just going ahead and calling out him out by name. Hope he doesn't hear. <laughs> so uh, one thing I want to I mention about Ozzy before we do get back to you know the main story mm-hmm. here is right. you know he puts a save me d and then he yells i did it i did it just like he yells at the end of the comic book uh, i did uh, it and then he gets yanked yeah, so I, yeah. I thought that was great all right so yeah, great call back so wade gives up angela here he knows that his cactus is uh bugged he has her over says what's going on with this it's nostalgia it's uh, angela's grandfather's nostalgia uh she takes the whole thing yeah <laughs> Takes the whole thing. Yeah, the, 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 her reactions to Wade just betraying her and everything is just like, what? Are you serious and everything? And we're so used to Angela being the um the um the main character with her point of view for these past few episodes and everything to see her in a different light as a side character was actually re- refreshing in a, in a TV show period. But just to have everything come from Wade's perspective and her betraying her at that at this moment, because essentially he's protecting her in a way, because um, um, King told her, <clears throat> you know, we need you to um, key told um, Wade that we need you to keep Angela out the way mm-hmm. while we do our thing, you know, or else we're going to have to go out and kill her old family. <laughs> she needs to be out of the way, you know, uh, three days. She's family. You know, Will saying she's family. She's not going to forgive him. You know, uh, nostalgia. She's going to take these pills, and what's going to happen? Yeah, three days, right? Three days. So, so that's the same thing that Will said at the end of right. um that previous episode, there, right? Yeah. So okay. we're talking about she's going to be reliving these memories of uh, Will's because she has enough, probably a close enough genetic makeup that it'll work for her. Right. Uh, so she'll be able to see what went on. Um, I'm really interested to see where they go with this. You know, right. there would be a lot of ways to lie to someone just through a mission doing something like this, right? I mean, mm-hmm. if you just played back, you know, just like Eternal Sunshine of the a Spotless Mind, right? You can remove all the good memories or remove all the bad memories or amplify the good or amplify the bad. And, uh, you know, I, I think we're going to get a front row seat to what Nostalgia is doing. Um, this is also all tied into this cloning operation. There's so much tied up. Everyone that's been to Vietnam has got something funky about him. You know, uh, Judd was in Vietnam in the sixties. So let's not, mm-hmm. let's not discount that as something discount that's true. That, right. You're right. Mm-hmm. Uh, something, something weird is going on. I don't want to call it just invasion of the body snatchers here, but it wouldn't shock me if like Angela is a clone and Cal's a clone and everybody's a clone and you get a clone and you get a clone and you get a clone and but if you're Lady True and you wanted to put it so that one of your products was in charge of the police force, I mean, Judd was in Vietnam, and we know that he was tied into you know this backroom deal to run the Seventh Cavalry. We know Lady True's involved with them. Uh, so why? But why would she then set this mechanism in motion to why is she doing to kill it, Judd? What's right. the point of doing that? How right. is it distracting people? from the millennium clock is it distracting the senator is that the senator i'm excited to see what's going to happen next week man because we're going to get some launcher answers for some stuff it looks like this is the final this is some of the final this is the midterm coming up yeah here. we're 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 coming up on the um the, the back half of the um yeah the, the, the story and everything so yeah like you said it's the mid act yeah we're gonna get some um stuff settled we're, 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 I'm assuming, like I said, next episode is probably going to be very Angela centric going in like flashbacks and find out what these memories are. Maybe we even get, maybe, uh, if, if, if the theories are correct as far as will be in the hood of justice and everything, maybe we even might get some, you know, as far as that. This, this sixth episode is going to be really interesting. I, I think by the end of this next episode, we will know why that police officer who was murdered in the first episode isn't dead. And we will know that it was to test. <laughs> it was to test <laughs> this, this murder, <laughs> like this replacement stuff. And we'll find out that Judd said no. 
and that'll be I think that's what we're going to find out. That's speculation, of course, not a spoiler, because, uh. you know, I'm not getting advanced review copies. You know, I'm not a big, <laughs> I'm not enough, big enough cog down at the cheese factory, you know. We need more subscribers for that. That's right. So let's get that up. So if you're if you're here on this, this is a plea. Go ahead and subscribe uh, <laughs> and check out our other podcasts, uh, you know, uh, Carbonite Bounty BS, uh, which we host with our friends. So check out Carbonite Bounty BS and also check out Nobody Cares. Yeah, make sure you do all that. Do did, 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 did we go into this last the last aspect of that this episode? Uh which last is So we 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 see um 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 so we see like a little bit of a montage. Oh right. <laughs> I'm not good at this. There's a reason I'm not on TV. Yeah, there's a reason I'm not famous. I'm not good. At this. I had to find I had to find someone that was equally as unprofessional. That's the reason why my name comes first, guys. <laughs> That's why he always watches it first. That tells me it's okay. That's how we're gonna I do it. I keep this from now guy on track here, Look, buddy. that's enough. Enough with this baby danger and dog danger. You know, you watch it first. You tell me if I should watch it. That's how we're gonna do it from now on over here. But yeah, so okay, so Looking Glass comes home, tosses mm-hmm. aside his, you know, his fears, his anxiety. You know, yeah, picks he's it back just up. Like, ah, not really right. ready to let go, and then is mobbed by the Seventh Cavalry and shotguns. Now, I'm hoping for his sake, this black. is just some sort of, like, bizarre initiation ritual like my fraternity used to do. Uh, not as many shotguns involved in that one, thankfully. Uh, but, you know, uh, I don't... It don't, seems like they're coming to take him out, man. Yeah, hopefully he runs right back into that bunker, and then... Oh, man. I mean, like, poor Wade. I love Wade. Don't take him do out. Do you think that he you know? has more guns or less guns than Angela? Oh, At least Wade as many, guns. right? Man. If anyone's got a There's... shot, I think Wade's got a shot here. <laughs> so we're pulling for you, Wade. We'll see you next week, Wade. Oh, man. Hopefully. You know. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully we're not just... The, 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 the way the show goes, we probably won't see any of Wade next right. week until, like, um episode seven. It'll be Angela. Like Where's said. Cal? Where are you? Yeah. She'll be fighting right, her way right. through. I'm sorry. That's just TV tropes. I'm just missing. <laughs> I, 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 I obviously... That know. would be very Linda Lofty and yes. just, to, um, just to, to wipe everything out, to leave this episode on this cliffhanger. Not to have any aspects of it the next episode, mm-hmm. and then the seventh episode is when everything just goes starts to go downhill until like the um, until like the you know the end of the season. Well, the eighth episode should so. have all the answers, and the ninth mm-hmm. episode should ask all new questions. Right, that's what we're looking for here. Hopefully, mm. shall see. For our sake, so we got to keep the lights on here. Yeah, pretty our much. Encyclopedia Studios, which is this luxurious <laughs> place you see before you here. <laughs> uh, studio. So, so we'll be. So that's the episode. I liked it a lot. Uh, yeah, it was a very, very good episode. It was one of the the. It was the best episode of the season. You liked it best. I lo- I, I, I liked it. I liked it. Um, uh, if if I had to rank the episode so far, this episode, the Lori Blake episode is second, and then the um the third, the first episode was probably my favorite. Okay. okay. I really liked. If I, had to, if I had to rank them, I liked the Lori Blake episode the best. The episode three. Mm-hmm. Um, I like this episode a lot too. I mm-hmm. like this episode a lot too. So it's hard to say. I almost feel like you have to make the Adrian Veidt parts its own t- like tenth episode once we're done with this because I just, <laughs> I'm always like, what is that guy doing and why? I mean, it's just just like you know the weirdness is like okay, they better get to what he's doing and everything. So you know, pretty much we're we're tired. We're 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 getting a little bit um you know anxious to see. Oh, the, we see the Chrome Shanks yeah. and like uh, Mr. Phillips and everything. All these Mr. Um, Phillipses. Yeah, 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 and where we we know that he's like tossing these 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 bodies out, you know, on on the um the moons of Jupiter and stuff. <coughs> Let's go. And he really is on the moons of Jupiter. He's not. Yeah, no, right. It wasn't crazy, just be. It crazy, wasn't just crazy. like some sort of psychic or you know computer generated. Thing. But 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 the answer to that question just raises a whole bunch more questions. Mm-hmm. Very Lindelofian, you know. Like if he disappeared, like it would take a long time to get to Jupiter if it was Lady True. I think like. Like, let's say it would take six months to get to Mars, and that's, like, five times farther. So three years random travel time to get out that far. Plus, Jupiter's orbit's a lot bigger than ours, so we could be very far away from it indeed in comparison to where we are in the sun. So to, so, to answer so, the question you didn't ask, I have no idea how long it would take to get to the moon of Jupiter from Earth. I don't know. So put on your tinfoil hat here. Put it on. Okay, hold on. The question we're still not asking is why the fuck is 
Adrian there in the first place? Punishment. Next question. Retribution. Next question. So it's either because Dr. Manhattan said he needs to pay or it's because Lady True convinced him. I think it's because Lady True convinced him that he couldn't do more, no more good. His work was done. You know, time to step aside. Maybe fed him some memories of, of, of somebody's. Maybe of Dr. Manhattan's. But who knows? So, so, so punishment, retribution, and everything. Punishment for what he did back in 11 2? Yes. I think what I here's here's my ultimate theory is that Lady mm-hmm. True has in her possession his memories of doing this mm-hmm. because he he must have got him set up and if if she threatened to expose them ah. if he didn't say sell her the company and she said but you will be cared for we're gonna send you to a place where no one will be able to bother you it'll be stocked with all this stuff you know you'll have servants it'll be a nice so castle. so so. Knowing what we know about Adrian mm. and him being so full of himself and everything, you know, think he's a, he's the smartest man in the world still and everything. Mm. He's willingly going to go to this place by your theory of 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 what was posed there by you know Lady True. Just, he's willingly he would willingly go. Yes, because because his work is finished. Okay. So something. So what what it was, I don't know, but it could also be just blackmail. I mean, blackmail is a pretty simple thing. <laughs> So I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think, but I think there's definitely no someone has there. to be very smart enough to, you know, blackmail that guy. It definitely doesn't. Know, so. It definitely doesn't feel like it's actually Doctor Manhattan doing it. Um, it definitely seems more like, more like uh, Lady True's doing it. So that's my okay. uh, my my current my current theory. Although that can change, you know, that can change. To the moons the of Jupiter, huh? To the so moons we'll, of Jupiter. That sounds like we'll, the worst. We'll see how powerful Lady Lady True is and everything. She's a very interesting character that we need to learn a lot more about, you know. Uh, yeah, is she the first Lady True? I don't think so. <laughs> I think they're all, Oh, <laughs> I know this is going to sound crazy. I just think they're all clones. All right. So, that was <laughs> So that was season that was one, the episode. episode 5. We're done with that. Uh, mercifully so this week up uh coming up this week uh tomorrow uh, i should have out uh nobody cares what well, scott thinks about wreck and morty uh season four episode two the old man in the seat which was a right. heavy duty emotional episode so there should be some good content there uh yeah it might be some tears too you know we'll see so uh i don't know <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't actually recorded it yet so it could be uh you know the future is a variable here um right. we're also going to be dropping uh in very short order our uh, podcast on Mandalorian Chapter 2, which is called two. Carbonite Bounty VS. Uh, the VS scuttlebutt about our Carbonite bounties. Um, uh, we might out. show, we, we might talk about a little, little tiny, you know, cute little baby, you know, in, in the uh, process. If you guys think I'm all about the babies on this show, I mean, <laughs> baby Wait Yoda, till we get to our <laughs> Baby Yoda's a whole different level of baby. So I'm very heavily in favor of Baby Yoda's. That is, uh, I'm pro Yoda baby, pro man. Baby Yoda. Oh, man. That's awesome. So baby Yoda's so cool. So, yeah, they, they let John Favreau do it, which is good. So check that out. Uh, podcast is going really great. Check it out on YouTube. Yep. Check it out. I think we just got approval. It's going to be on the Googles and the Apples and, and yeah, such. Yeah, make sure that you're, you're you're following, you know, all our different podcast platforms and everything. Um, Google, Nerd Psychopedia, all of it is there. Um Make sure that if you're watching this now, you hit that subscribe button. It's very important that we get our subscriber count up. You know, that's how we get more, um, you know, stuff going on and how we, you know, continue to bring you these, these podcasts and, you know, getting the feedback that we want, you know, to, you know, to get. Um, Restore make sure our that- preciously ebbing will to live by subscribing <laughs> to the podcast and the channel right here. So, exactly. Um, make sure that you guys are <clears throat> going to our website, like we said, Nerd Cyclopedia. Supplemental um, follow writings. Follow us at Nerd Cyclopedia. Supplemental writing, exactly. supplemental writings. And remember, live after the show this week, 10.05, 10.05, mm-hmm. this 10.05. channel, Nerd Cyclopedia, will be doing a live show. If you're here when we're here, you ask us questions, we're going to try to respond. Uh, looks like there's going to be a lot to talk about, so... Looking forward Bongo, to that. Bongo, Bongo, I, I see you out there. You asked, you was asking yes. when our live podcast began and everything. So if we took too long getting on, you know, we are on it this week. We were. So um, thank, thank you for actually, you know, um, um, getting on our live chat. And um, please, you know, as we're podcasting, you know, these episodes live and everything, jump on the chat. We'll, you know, we'll um, read all some of our, some of your comments and everything too. To, to promo your stuff and uh, 
But yeah, check it out. Uh, super glad to have you with us here. If you're joining us for the first time, come back. And if not, you know, you've already made the decision, so you're just going to watch it all anyway. So <laughs> here we are. Uh, any other uh, any other final thoughts? Sam? No, can't wait till the next episode. You know, we're on the back half, people. I mean, we're in the middle, so it's time to, um, you know, see where we're going downhill. All right, we'll see you for the midterm. Get to studying, everybody. Peace. Nerdcyclopedia.